Hi, I'm David. Today we're going to try to find the domain of a function. Uh, this function is a little bit of a tricky one, so there are a couple things to unpack here. g of x equals 2 over 1 minus cosine x. So when we're trying to find the domain of the function, we've got to ask ourselves a couple of things. We've got to figure out, okay, where might I run into trouble? Where might things go wrong? Um, a couple of things kind of jump out. Uh, the 2 is benign, right? The 2 is fine. But I do have a fraction here. And I know that in the bottom of a fraction, in the denominator, I cannot have a 0. So let me go ahead and put that uh, piece of information down. I know that 1 minus cosine x cannot equal 0. Let me think if there are any other places I could go wrong. Um, I don't have a negative under square root or anything like that to worry about. And I might worry a little bit about cosine x. Is this one of those trigonometric functions that's undefined somewhere? Well, let me just go ahead and draw a picture of cosine x because we're going to need it in a little bit anyway. Um, here's what cosine x looks like. I'll draw a really big axis. Um, cosine x repeat, repeats itself every 2 pi. So I'll do increments of pi here. Pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. It goes forever to the right and forever to the left. Negative pi, negative 2 pi. And it oscillates between 1 and negative 1. So I'll put those on them, on the axis as well. 1 and negative 1. And let me go ahead and just draw a dotted line on that 1 and negative 1, because that'll help me draw the cosine graph a little bit better. So there's a dotted line of height 1, or negative 1. And there's a dotted line of height 1. OK, cosine x. Um, I might be a little worried about where it starts, but cosine of 0 is 1 looks something like this, so it starts up here. Um, I know that at 2 pi, at 4 pi, at negative 2 pi, uh, and so on, it's going to hit down there. And at pi, 3 pi, and at negative pi, it's going to be down here at negative 1. And I'm going to connect these dots in this, uh, in this curve fashion. So it looks something like this. And it keeps on going. OK, so there's a rough sketch of what cosine x looks like. Now, from this picture, I know that it's defined everywhere, so I don't have to worry about that too much. So let's go back to this issue of 1 minus cosine x cannot equal 0. Um, well, this is a picture of y equals cosine x, not y equals 1 minus cosine x. I could try to get a graph of what 1 minus cosine x look to see what that looks like, but I don't need to. Um, I can just solve the equation 1 minus cosine x equals 0 for cosine x. When I do that, I'll just bring cosine x to the other side of the equation. I have 1 equals cosine x. So what I've done here is I, I know now that g of x is undefined if cosine x equals 1. Now the question is, where does cosine x equal 1? Well, I've got the picture right here. I know exactly where cosine x equals 1. It equals 1 at 0, at 2 pi. It would have hit again here at 4 pi and at negative 2 pi. And it hits infinitely many times. So now I'm stuck with another issue. How do I represent infinitely many times where this function is undefined? It's undefined at 0, at 2 pi, at 4 pi. Let's see what we can do here. Um, I know that g of x is undefined if cosine x equals 1. And I also know that cosine x equals 1 at x equals infinitely many numbers to the left, negative 2 pi, 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, and so on. Now, if I can get a pattern for this, then I can write it in a kind of more condensed way, in a more concise way. Um, I notice that these are all multiples of pi. But more so than that, they're all even multiples of pi. So I could write um, x is equal to 2 pi times n, where n is any integer. Integers are things like 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, all the positive and negative whole numbers, and, and 0. 
So this is a condensed way of writing all those places where cosine of x equals 1. All right, but these are all the places where g of x is undefined. So the domain of g of x is all real numbers except, so where x does not equal 2 pi times n for any integer n. Now this is sometimes a tricky thing to, uh, to write out, especially when there are infinitely, infinitely many places where this function is undefined. But this is a good way, when you have one of these trigonometric functions that repeats itself over and over again, to write the domain. All real numbers except for the places where x equals a multiple of 2 pi.